Hey yo, Bolomu is back. Last time we talked about five of the most common birds in Hong Kong, and the comments that I got back from viewers were mostly positive. So let's continue our excitement, and today I'm gonna talk about another five birds that are relatively common in Hong Kong as well. So let's get started. Cockatoo is native to Timor Leste and Indonesia, and somehow they made their way across the globe. Australia now has the most cockatoo in the world, and we have 200 of them in Hong Kong, which is about 10% of the world's record, according to a 2017 article from the Green Power. You will never miss them because of their distinctive characteristics. The first one is their appearance, where they have snowy white plumage with a yellow crest, and the second one is they are the most noisiest bird ever. Let's hear what they sound like. Sadly, they are now considered as critically endangered in the IUCN Red List, where we used to keep them as pets due to their beautiful appearance. Yet, we can find these beauties naturally in the former Victoria Barracks, which is the area around Hong Kong Park, to Pacific Place, St. John Cathedral, Hong Kong University, etc. I'm sure you have seen a red risk bulbul in Hong Kong before. You can literally find them in woodland, in the countryside, urban parks, and wooded areas. They are also native to the tropics of Asia, similar to the cockatoos. Same as the cockatoos, you will never miss them once you've encountered them due to their unique appearances. They have black crown like crest, red ear coverts, white cheeks and throat. The red patch is only for adults, where juveniles do not have that. One thing that I didn't know before is that they are actually considered as invasive in Australia because of the competition with native birds for food and nesting sites. They appeared on the news back in 2015 where the ABC had published an article to raise public awareness hoping people could provide a photo, location and time when spotting them to SS Canberra. If we mention the red whisker bobble, how can we forget about the Chinese bobble? They are from the same family. In terms of its appearance, the Chinese bubble is less recognizable than the red whisker bubble. It has a large white patch covering the nape and the side of its black head. In Hong Kong, the red whisker bubbles are mainly in suburbs and urban parks, whereas the Chinese bubble can be found in lightly wooded areas, cultivated land, and scrubland. In Taiwan, its distribution is another story. The Chinese bubble dominates almost everywhere except the East Coast where the Australian bobos are the bosses over there. The fourth one is the Japanese white eye. This bird is common in Hong Kong, but it is kinda small in size, so it might be difficult to spot them. But if you think you've spotted one, see if you can take the following list. Do they have a bright green upper part, a yellow throat, a greenish back, and dark brown wings? If you have all of them, then congratulations, you have found a Japanese white eye. As the name suggested, it is originated from Japan, but now you can find them in East Asia, including China, Vietnam, Taiwan, and the Philippines. It is commonly seen in woodland and major urban parks. They are definitely a soprano in the bird's family, where they sing high notes like this. For the final one, I'll bring you guys to the big boss, the black kite. Black kites usually soar in circles above urban areas, they sometimes fly solo, but when they migrate, they're in large groups. Large groups can be found at dusk or dawn around the magazine Gabriel in mid-levels on Hong Kong Island. They are large diurnal raptor with brown plumage distributed throughout the whole Southeast Asia. In Hong Kong, you can spot them above Victoria Harbour. The reason why they can be found there is that they feed on reviews, which is rubbish, fishes, and dead animals. There was an interesting research back in 2017 that was conducted by Fulton and Chang, where they suggested that more reviews near the shore would attract more black kites to forage near that and at a lower height. They raised a the question, could the appearance of black kites indicate refuse hotspots in Hong Kong's waterways or not? Well, I will leave this question to you guys and please share your thoughts under the comment section. Thank you once again for accompanying me on this journey in Hong Kong. I hope you guys have started paying attention to our lovely nature. 
let's explore other best species together next time. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See ya!